In baseball, legends are born in October. It is here where the true character of a team is revealed. But I won't back down, no, I'll never surrender. Last night, the Cubs responded as their offense came to life. This ball, go! And their hitters broke out tonight. Now, with the series tied at two games apiece, the Cubs send out their ace. has been so good for the Chicago Cubs. But the Dodgers haven't backed down from a challenge yet. It is way back, and it is gone! Oh, no! They'll look to take control of the series on their home turf. Get ready for a battle, cause you know Who will be one win away from the World Series? Find out next. What a night it was for Anthony Rizzo last night. He had two career postseason RBIs before. Three RBIs last night in the Cubs route over the Dodgers. Taking you to a game five of this NLCS where Dave Roberts is the big game for him trying to get L.A. back to the World Series for the first time since 1988. Warm day in Los Angeles. And we welcome you to the Lincoln Motor Company NLCS pregame show right here on FS1. Glad to have you aboard one more time with the crew. We're all here. Frank Thomas, Pete Rose, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. And away we go. Our pregame and, of course, this big game five coming up. And we apologize. We, we talked maybe some football in the production meeting today, Pete. You know, we had a special guest visitor. We we're trying to talk baseball, but then this guy walks in. Oh, man. <laughs> you were ready to look like you were ready to tackle him. Yeah, I'm sure I was. Yeah. yeah. That's a, <laughs> Miami hurricane, Kev. Well, I knew that was coming, which well, is which is what happened. Oh, there he oh. is. Oh. That man can lay a lick on you, buddy. It's all we, about the you boys. At least you didn't play for the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, yeah. Frank. I'd like, I'd like to see you and Ray. That would be a good collision you know, with a tight end seam. Well, well I had to block guys like that. I yeah. just know he's my favorite of all time because he really brought it every day. I mean, he was a vicious hitter, and people knew, they were always aware that Ray, Ray Lewis was in the middle. All right, there you go. So we did talk some baseball. Was he a football analyst? <laughs> oh, I, I did play Pete. He can do it all. I know he's good. Okay. Right, before we okay. get started, I got a question for you. You know, if you let Frank and I know where that guy lives, we'll get him. Who, Ray? No, the guy who cut your hair. <laughs> give you credit for holding it in the whole day because usually you just let it rip with that why don't we give you a little recap of this series in case you missed it game one it was adrian gonzalez tying in the eighth inning with a two-run single over all this chapman and then miguel montero pinch hit grand slam the cubs win it eight to four in game number one but the next night a solo shot adrian gonzalez and that was all you would need because clayton kershaw retired his first 14 batters he allowed just two hits in seven innings to tie up that series. And then to L.A. for game number three, Rich Hill. Great. Six shutout innings. Yasmani Grandal with some offense. He and Justin Turner went deep. The Dodgers take a 2-1 series lead until last night. Julio Urias, a 20-year-old, went to the mound. But the Cubs' bats came alive. Addison Russell homered in a 4-1 fourth. Anthony Rizzo with a home run in the fifth here. 10-2 Cubs. And we were all tied at two games apiece in this NLCS. And so now we know a couple guys for the Cubs got hot, right? Rizzo woke up, Addison Russell woke up. One guy they like to wake up now is Jason Hayward, and he is with Tom Verducci. Thanks, Kevin. Well, Jason, maybe there's not as many hits this postseason as you would like, but you did have the triple off a of Kenta Maeda fastball in game one. Tell me about how you feel about your offensive game seeing Maeda for a second time in five days. Um, it's going to be good to see a familiar face, uh, you know, a familiar pitcher. I feel like it's been a little different being in and out of lineup. Just to try to keep some timing going and feel for these games because I feel like feel is the biggest thing in the postseason, coming in and being able to relax and, and do what you can do. Um, but I'm ready to contribute any way I can, and I feel like it's going to be good for our team again to, to see a guy that we've seen already. 
Jason, you know how quickly things can change in the postseason. 24 hours ago, this team was sitting on two consecutive shutouts. Now you're coming off a 10-run game. How is the vibe different today coming into game five for the Cubs? Well, we've you know, we've been a part of that before. I mean, we're going to face good pitching. Hats off to the two lefties that threw, uh, threw well against us. That's going to happen from time to time. Everything's magnified in the postseason. You don't have you know, another series behind it or two series behind it to say, well, all right, guys, we'll, we'll make an adjustment. So you just try and make it as fast as you can. But today, um, you know, we're coming in not relieved. I mean, we just we did what we could do last night and, and we kept things simple. You know, home runs are great, and, and we know that's a part of our game, but a lot of small things as well that we bring to the ballpark. Jason, thank you, and stay cool. Thanks, Tom. I try. I appreciate it. Back to you, Kevin. Tom, Jason, thanks. Jason won't have to face Clayton Kershaw tonight. Dave Roberts made the call that, you know, he could have started him on short rest tonight like he's been doing so much, but instead he's going to push him to game six. So Maeda goes tonight instead. So are we worried about the Dodgers' decision? Will they regret, Alex, the decision to push Kershaw back to normal rest? Uh, I don't think so, Kevin. I like the decision, and I like it a lot. Um, what I really like about this is I like the discipline and restriction they're practicing here. Um, he's worked a lot. Give him a shot, and he's going to have pitch game six. Well, they're going to have to win one of the next two games anyway. So what's there? They win tonight, and they lose Saturday and Sunday. So uh, I kind of agree with Alex. I mean, Dave knows what he's doing, and, and you don't want to overextend uh, Clayton. I mean, I don't know if he'll pull his back, but he was out two months with that disc problem, and you just got to stay away from that because there's years to come after this series. I think it's a smart move. Four times pitched in 10 days. Uh, it it kind of put a little pressure on the Cubs tonight. It's a must win for the Cubs, knowing that Kershaw is waiting on Saturday in Wrigley. You know, Frank, one of the things about October is you have to be assertive with your decisions, but you also have to be diligent with your 11 pitchers, especially your starter and your closer. So today's a good day for the Dodgers. I would have to think, right, Frank, that if Kershaw's going on a normal rest, actually he'll have an extra day rest because you get an off day, then Dave Roberts won't hesitate with Maeda tonight. I mean, I would think he'd go the bullpen early if he has to, right? Exactly. He's going to have to. Kevin, yeah. and, and with the extra day, I think Dave Roberts, basically training wheels come off, Clayton Kershaw should go to, you know, 125 if need be. Also true. Well, his closer didn't have to pitch last night. That's another good thing. That is a help. So things setting up, we'll see if it is the right decision for Dave Roberts. One thing is for sure, Dave Roberts was busy pulling out a lot of car because it's different today. Why is it different? Because they have struggled against lefties, and John Lester's killed them this year. So they're trying something new. They put a bunch of righties in there, but you see Ruiz is clean up now, and Adrian Gonzalez goes down to six in the order. So that is interesting. And with that, why don't we welcome in Ken Rosenthal live from Dodger Stadium, of course, part of the broadcast crew tonight. Ken, we just showed it. Dodgers shaking up their lineup in a big way, too. So what did Dave Roberts say about the decision to really change things around tonight? Well, Kevin, this is certainly a much different look than they showed against Lester in game one. Dave Roberts told me that basically he's trying to add length to the lineup, but really there's a hidden motivation here. The Dodgers all season long have struggled against lefties. So what are they thinking tonight? Kike Hernandez leading off. Well, if he can get on base, he can be disruptive. We all know Lester with runners on base, a different guy. Chuch Ruiz in the fourth spot. 0 for 16 against Lester with four strikeouts, but he hit the ball hard twice in game one against the left-hander. And then Adrian Gonzalez batting sixth for the first time since June 2012. He's only hit there three times in his career. He's never hit lower in the order, but he's a left-handed hitter. So they figure with a two-out RBI situation, maybe he gets a shot there. But again, this goes back to the Dodgers being unable to hit lefties. What they want to do is stack their best guys with a chance to get Lester early and hopefully get a lead. Say one thing, Ken. Dave Roberts isn't afraid of managing this postseason, is he? Boy, he does, he does not mind taking chances. All right, Kenny, we will see you at uh, the call at the top of the hour. We appreciate that. Ken Rosenthal from the Dodgers Stadium. It'll be a rematch of game one. Kenta Maeda against John Lester. So what should the approach of the hitters be against tonight's starters? We'll discuss with the guys when we come back. And we'll take a look back at the 77 World Series. Reggie Jackson, the historic three home run game. So with that, guess who's joining us here in studio when we come back? The Hall of Famer himself. Reggie's here. Hey. This is man. Right. Pino. There you go. Right. <laughs> Mr. October. Yeah, boys. See you. Reggie, great to see you. Reggie yes, Jackson is here in the studio. We will talk to him about October pressure. Really, Mark? Mm. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is for everyone. Are you ready? We'll take 16 million tickets, 50,000 foam hats, 2 million of those, and 1 million with cheese. Hot dog, hot dog. What do you want? Hot dog. 3 million hot dogs and goosebumps. We'll need billions of goosebumps. One million pregame rituals. Are you done? What else do we need? 
Jersey's will take all of them. And one almost perfect plan. Click, tap, dip, or swipe. Choose Visa, official payment partner of the NFL. Viagra single packs. So guys with ED can take Viagra when they need it. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain or adempus for pulmonary hypertension. Your blood pressure could drop to an unsafe level. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra single packs. This week, it's the NFL on Fox. Sam Bradford and the Vikings clash with Carson Wentz and the Eagles. Or Phillip Rivers and the Chargers face off with Matt Ryan and the Falcons. It all begins at noon Eastern. And don't miss a full slate of games on Fox. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and clogged the gutter system, creating a leak in the roof. Luckily, the spider recently had Geico help him with homeowner's insurance. Water completely destroyed his Swedish foam mattress. He got full replacement and now owns the sleep number bed. His sleep number setting is 25. Call Geico and see how much you could save on homeowner's insurance. Rated mature. I let them do it. We've got to find it first. You don't know how far I've come. Great game last night. Yeah, fantastic finish. That kid stuck with the electric. Reminds me of a young Pedro. It's gonna go down to the wire right to the very end. Woo! Better buckle your seatbelt. Nice job, where's he? Yo, it's your My AB, man. Oh, man. Lighter's getting rocked. Harold still got it. It's showtime. Let's go. And welcome, everyone, to MLB Tonight. We are tied at two in this NLCS, taking you up to a game five right here on FS1. Anthony Rizzo, a home run, three RBIs last night for these Cubs. From his battles with the boss and Billy Martin to his unforgettable postseason home runs, few players have been as clutch and charismatic as Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson. This Sunday on Fox, catch the making of Mr. October. Here's a preview. Superstar, athlete, larger than life. Everybody thought the guy was a cocky SOB, and he was. I came to win and to be the best. And what made him a legend were three swings on one night that you couldn't forget if you tried. Oh, what a blow! What a way to tough it off! Am I really seeing this? And with that, we welcome in the Hall of Famer, Reggie Jackson. Reggie, it is, uh, it's great to have you here today. Thank you, Kevin. It's a pleasure. Um, I do watch the show and get my fill of laughs every night when I'm listening to these guys talk. So <laughs> All right. I look forward to it. Speaking of, so this show looks great. What is, what is this? Give us a little feel for this show coming up on Sunday on Fox. Um, they wanted to do, uh, you know, my, my time in the World Series and playing in postseason. Um, and so I did my best to, uh, to try to tell some of the stories that happened. And uh, I had promises that they wouldn't butcher me, et cetera. I'd done something called the Bronx is Burning. I was never really involved in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wound up getting filleted in that one, deboned, uh, being the bad guy, <laughs> if you will. So I, I was very are. careful about, <laughs> about this one. Uh, but the, the guy, I think it was Jed Termino. And, and there was a couple of Marks on the show and a couple of Tonys on the show, so pretty easy to remember everyone's name. But <laughs> I had a good time with them. They came up to the Bay Area, and we talked about cars and my foundation and baseball, and it was a good time. You know, I'm sitting here, and I have to ask myself, growing up a baseball fan, this is, this is pretty cool. There's a lot of home runs on this set right now, all right? Just give you an, give you an idea. Let's put up the numbers. Just, uh, I mean, this is, this is home run territory right here. We've got 1,940 home runs sitting next to me right now on this panel. It's pretty good. 
And a lot of strikeouts, too, Kevin. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> I was hoping you'd play a few more years. Yeah, the reason why I retired was I didn't want to catch you with strikeouts. <laughs> I got disappointed when, when Jim Tomey quit. He had, like, 2,500 and 20 or something. He was close. And then he retired. And How about Adam Dunn? I was hoping he'd play a little longer, too. <laughs> well? I'll tell you the best story I heard. We got time? Of course. Huh? We're, Pete and I are t talking about home runs and strikeouts and base hits and this and that. And Pete stops and he said, you know something, Reggie? He said, um, with my 4,000 hits, he said, I made 10,000 outs. I made more outs than you got at bats. And when you think about it, that's pretty awesome. Reg, go ahead, Pete. Yeah. No, go ahead. I got a question for both you guys because I think you guys are both advisors to the Yankees, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Which one of you got rid of Andrew Miller? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I got uh, scratched my head twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew Miller is really a special guy. Um, I know I'd, you know, talk to you know our executives and really Brian uh, Cashman, who made you know made those trades with his staff, etc. So you. You support it 100% because I'm on the team and I have a job to do in the minor league system, the major league system when I'm there. Um, but we got some really good players for him. Uh, but when you think about Andrew Miller, um, he signed for two years at, at cheap money in baseball now, 10 million per. He's a fabulous guy, a Stanford grad, six foot seven, six foot eight, throws anywhere from 95 to 98 miles an hour with a fastball and can do anything. He can pitch the seventh, pitch the eighth. Uh, he can pitch, he can do the four outs, if you will, and he has character like the great players of the past, which you guys would relate relate to. Reggie, how would you hit well, him? What would you do? How would you hit him? Because most people haven't even touched him this postseason. Well, he, he's a handful, and for me, I would have to give him his breaking ball and look for his fastball. He throws too hard to look for a breaking ball anyway. Anybody that can touch 97, 98, and if you're one of these guys on the stage, you're going to see all he's got. And so you're going to look for his fastball. You know, I, I was telling the guys and the folks at home, if not only is he, for me, the best reliever in the game, there's 750 players. He would be my number one pick. And he is a historical talent. But what I've tried to convey to the fans at home and, 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 and the boys here is what a special human being he is and what he brings as a leader, a role model, and always brings a good face, and uh, Cleveland got quite a package. Always brings a good face. That, that's a comment you don't hear, but it's, it's certainly the right one. You know, I was watching a lot of these guys in the playoffs. They said they're having a hard time going to the plate without men in scoring position. I want to know, what do you feel about being in scoring position, Reggie? <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank and I, he, he, told, he told me he was going to take me down that alley. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as, as, as Al and Pete know, that there's certain times during, during, the, during the year, especially in spring training, when you're talking about what you do offensively and what, what the manager likes and, you know, the things you should do, advancing the runner and things like that. And in my last year, uh, I was in camp with 500 and some home runs my last year with the A's, and Tony LaRusso says, gets us all together, Carney Lansford, Jason Jambi, um, Dave Henderson, we're going to have an offense day to talk about how, what you do at home plate when a man <laughs> is scoring position. And he talks to Carney about it. He wants to advance the runner. He talks to Jason about it. He wants to get a base hit and drive their run in and maybe choke up on the bat, make sure it puts the ball in play. And he comes to me and says, Reggie, now, you've got a lot of RBIs and a lot of home runs. He said, now, what do you do differently when there's a man in scoring position? I said, well, you know, Skip, <laughs> you know, I, I really feel like when I'm hitting and there's nobody on, there's a man in scoring position. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it, Tony is such a serious guy, he, he cracked up himself. But uh, Can that, I ask a question? Yeah, of course. So, so Reg, I, I know you since I was 16 years old. We came out to the Upper Deck Classic in Cal State Fullerton. You gave you the keynote speaker. Uh, and obviously, you've looked up to you for, for a long time, and we've been with the Yankees. You saw my struggles firsthand. I, I wasn't exactly Mr. October. I'm wondering, why were you always so good, and how did you embrace the mm. energy all the time? You know, I think the word you said there I would use would be embrace. I looked at being in a big position or needing a base hit as a place where I wanted to be. I wanted to be the guy. 
Um, I honestly felt like I could get a good pass at the baseball, um, really not be anxious. I felt like I was the guy that applied the pressure. I felt like if I struck out or I made an out, I'd just go back to the bench, sit next to the guys, and have given it my best. But I really took it as an opportunity to uh, narrow my focus, just me and the pitcher, and make sure I got the barrel on the baseball, make sure I could find the baseball with the barrel. Well, you did that, actually. You played 27 uh, World Series games. You had 10 home runs. You hit 357 and 24 RBIs. And by the way, you hit 95 points higher in the World Series than you did re than right. during the regular season. That's where you got the name Mr. October. Right. I always thought I was Mr. April, May, June, July, and October. <laughs> September. <laughs> yeah, you're Mr. October. You guys had the, you had the calendar covered, you two. <laughs> 4,200 hits is pretty good, buddy. I'll tell you, you got, uh, Reggie, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for coming by. I look forward to watching the show. He's the greatest. I appreciate you coming. There he I, is. Thanks, Reggie. When I go home later, I'm going to watch you guys tonight. All right. We love it. The Hall of Famer, Reggie. Jackson with us, of course, his show coming up, Mr. October, Sunday on Fox. Check your local listings for times for that one. Well, the Indians get a nice five-day break from playing in Game 1 of the World Series. That'll be Tuesday night in Cleveland, 7.30 Eastern on Fox. And guess what? We will be there with you. Clayton Kershaw not pitching tonight. We'll ask the Hall of Famer John Smoltz if he agrees with Dave Roberts' decision. We're back with the pregame in a moment. There are some voices that can't be ignored. You come at the king, you best not miss. It's time to grow up. Culture of winning matters. Conflict draws people in. Everybody's a critic. Everybody gets an opinion. We're watching a revolution. Speak for yourself. Weekdays at 5 Eastern on FS1. If you want someone to leave you alone, you pretend like you're sleeping. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Taking selfies in the kitchen does not make you a model. Okay. Yesterday, a wizard entered New York with a case full of magical creatures. And unfortunately, some have escaped. It was open. Just a smidge. Contain this, or it'll mean war. I want to be a wizard. Fantastic beasts and where to find them. Rated PG-13. Experience it in IMAX. Hey, Rich. We're trying to do a thing. Get the hell out of here. Oh, you're not in this thing. Oh, get your ass out of here. Get your ass out of here. You're here to buy a car. What would help is simply being able to recognize a fair price. True Car has pricing data on every make and model. So all you have to do is search for the car you want. There it is. Now you're an expert in less than a minute. This is True Car. You have a vision. It's behind everything you do. Even when you least expect it, it comes through. You know what you want, and we can help make it real. You need choices? We've got all kinds, including special finishes and papers. And they're all absolutely guaranteed. Because you have a vision, and we have your card. 500 started just $9.99 when you enter 500 TV at vistaprint.com. Are you a Christian author with a book ready to share with the world but need a publisher? We'll place your book for sale at all major mainstream booksellers, offering it to millions. We do it all. Call for your free author submission kit at 800-622-1421. Wear with the best wear. MLBshop.com. Sunny and hot over Dodger Stadium and aerial coverage today. Brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. And if you're there, go get yourself a Dodger dog. Hey, baseball fans. Introducing the Dodger Dog. 
leading off a fresh warm bun, cradling the tasty star of the show. Next up, spicy mustard. In the heart of the order, Southern California relish. Finally, a touch of onions, and it's a home run for all. Wow, did you see that? Kid would rather eat the Dodger dog than grab the baseball. <laughs> it's a great Los Angeles tradition, famous throughout baseball. Your Dodger dog. Dodger dogs. How many do you think he could eat? Oh, <laughs> easily six. Oh, you could crush six. <laughs> They're this long. Hey, I'm a professional eater, Pete. You beat Kobayashi. <laughs> Kobayashi. Kobayashi had more than six. He, yeah, but they're only this big. Isn't Joey Chestnut like the champ now or something? That's a whole nother, that's a a whole whole nother, nother conversation. Another thing. All right, so here's a well, pitching matchup we tonight. Got, we have no life, do we, Kelly? No, we don't. <laughs> if you haven't known that by now, you know it. We have zero life. All right, so the pitching matchup tonight. These guys, John Lester, Kenta Maeda. It's a rematch of game number one. And with that, we welcome in our Hall of Fame pitcher, John Smoltz. Calling the game tonight again with Joe Buck. John, let's talk about the guy who's not starting tonight. It's Clayton Kershaw, though. He will instead go to game six. Um, so do you like the decision by Dave Roberts to keep him uh, off of tonight's game and give him extra rest? Uh, I kind of do, even though if you'd asked me what I would do, I would want to pitch on uh, short <laughs> rest, and I'm sure he would too. But I think it's been a, a combination of communicating with him, and if he was strong one way or another, I think he could have the final say. But if they're going to make a long run, right, if they're going to win the World Series, I think this actually works out better for him. Of course they would like Kenta Maeda to pitch at home. He's got to pitch either way. And I think it's a little more comfortable for him to be at home and then put the hammer down with Kershaw if they're fortunate to win tonight. So it's 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 that 50-50 split of you you really could do just about anything, but if you think long term, I think this is the best decision. Well, John, the Cubs sent Lester to the mound tonight, and uh, he pitched well in game one. He's dominated the Dodgers this year. He's allowed two runs in 21 innings. So what do you expect out of him again here tonight? Well, I expect him to be aggressive and probably more pinpoint than he was in game one. And I also expect the Dodgers to do everything and anything to try to create chaos, whether that's on the field by bunning or on the base pass by running. They've got to get him uncomfortable. It was successful, even though he only gave up one run. He was a little bit off his game a little bit. So I think the Dodgers strategy, even though they don't typically run a ton, is going to try to do that. And for and for John Lester, I think he's going to be in attack mode with that four seamer. And then the first game, he had to go too many two seamers. As he said, he wasn't commanding. So it's going to be a classic game of a starting pitcher trying to give him seven innings. And on the other side, get me to the bullpen and six outs out of Jansen. That's what I think the Dodgers are hoping. John, I know you would have wanted to pitch. I just laugh at the beginning of this segment. That's great stuff, man. We appreciate it. Have a good, uh, have a good broadcast tonight with Joe Buck out there. John Smoltz you got, it. got the call tonight. You know he would want to pitch tonight, boys. That, that is for sure. And so that's the deal. We got Lester tonight. Uh, as John said, uh, you know, I, I alluded to the stat, but yeah, he, there were some line drives, and that's why he was taken out of the game 77 pitches the other night. How about tonight, Frank? Different lineup. We showed you a way different lineup. How about the Dodgers, and what do they have to do in their approach against Lester? I think Lester pitches well, but they got to take advantage of his earlier mistakes in the game. I know we said this all the time, get them early. They have to take care of the earlier mistakes with this guy because once he settles in, he gets on a roll, he gets his rhythm, and he's awfully tough when he gets in that situation. Well, I think the Dodgers are going to score a couple runs. I hope the, the Dodgers shore up their defense tonight. They were throwing a ball all over the park the other night and made four errors. You can't win playoff games making four errors against a team as good as the Chicago Cubs. You know, Pete, when John Lester came to the Cubs last year, signed for six years for $155 million, it sent a sign to all of baseball. Mm -hmm. They're here to win and win now. Mm -hmm. But facing him a bunch of times, Kevin, one of the things is he's a great competitor, but when you get in the batter's box, be ready to hit. The first pitch may be your last. Interesting about facing Lester and just about a game like this and a game or things like that. You know, and you touched on this the other day. Not about batting average, right? It's not about batting average at all. Kevin, I'm so tired of talking about batting average. I mean, they're great for us because we have all these stats in October. Throw it away. It does not mean anything. What you're looking for is moments and big at bats. Mr. October had a bunch of great moments. Nobody remembers what he hits. Bad average. Look, look at all those stock option notes. Look at stock mine. <laughs> look at what? My my stock. That's the first time I've seen yeah. you have a piece of paper on the show. <laughs> He's got three notes today. What happened to you? Are you forgetting things? I went dumb last night. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> get in this <laughs> conversation. I get back to math class. Get back okay. to A Rob. What he was talking about. Did you hear him? I heard everything okay. he said. Okay. John Lester. I'm telling you, he can paint Atta the best. Boy. Now you're listening. But he might throw 
early in the game before he gets that rhythm. You might get some pitches out of the plate, and that's what he's alluding to. You better get on him early. If not, he settles in. Ball game. You know what, Frank? Don't get cute with this guy. Yes. He is, there's no secrets. He's coming right at you, mano a mano. And with two strikes, the league hits a under 150. I think the other night we kind of second-guessed Joe taking him out with 77 pitches. But Joe did say he didn't think he had his best stuff because they did have some line driving. Maybe, maybe he was right, and Smoltz agree with that. All right, plenty more to do. We come back on this pregame show, taking it up to game number five, right? Anthony Rizzo broke out of his slump last night. Justin Turner's been red hot for the Dodgers. A-Rod breaks down Rizzo. Frank will tell you about Turner when we come back. Keep it here, baby. If I get this sequence wrong, if I make one mistake, this whole place is this. Wait a minute. Let's skip Bayless. Here we go. The expert who said the Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. Look, this year the offense keeps the defense off the field. Zeke wins rookie of the year behind the best line in football. The Cowboys feast on the NFC leagues. They're going to the Super Bowl, and you're about to blow up. Horrible clock management. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon. Weekdays only on FS1. Prop 61 only covers 12% of Californians, like some state government employees and prisoners. The other 88% of Californians would see an increase in their prescription drug costs. I'm telling my patients, and I'm urging you to vote no on 61. We're downtown to see if guys can tell the difference between a Joseph A. Banks suit and more expensive designer brands. Which one is the Armani suit? They poke it out of tie. Please reveal. Oh, my goodness. Do they all say Joseph A. Bank? Very impressive. Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. We're gonna take you for the tour. First floor, bun. Second floor, two patties. Mm. Third floor, penthouse, six strips of bacon, sesame seed roof. Mm -mm. Sunset. Try the new bacon king with a half pound of beef and six strips of crispy bacon. It's truly the bacon king. Only at Burger King. The California Medical Association, representing 41,000 doctors, opposes Prop 61. So does every leading veterans group in California. And every daily newspaper is urging no on 61. The more you know about Prop 61, the less you'll like it. Vote no. All through October, the DQ Five Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ Five Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let Five Buck Freedom ring. I could tell right away, ZipRecruiter was going to make hiring a lot easier. Go to ZipRecruiter.com and post to over a hundred job boards with one click. Then easily select the best candidates from one list. Try it for free today at ZipRecruiter.com/direct. I'm really into this car, but how do I know if I'm getting a good deal? I tell True Car my zip and which car I want, and True Car shows the range of prices people in my area actually paid for the same car, so I know if I'm getting a great price. This is how car buying was always meant to be. This is True Car. America, all through October, the DQ Five Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ Five Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let Five Buck Freedom ring. Welcome back to the Lincoln Motor Company NLCS pregame show here on FS1. Hot day in L.A. for game number five coming your way on FS1. And our guys are working. Look at Ken Rosenthal working his source, <laughs> Jason Hayward. Get in there, Kenny. Some good information. will give it to you during the game, which That's is coming up. the best. Now he is just 33 minutes. Welcome back to the field, to the show. Frank Thomas, Pete Rose, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Kevin Burkhart. To Anthony Rizzo, big story right along with this Cubs offense. And look, he, we know he was in a big-time slump, Alex, but something changed. All of a sudden, he woke up yesterday, three hits, a home run. question is, what did change? Yeah, Kevin, to me, it was mentality and approach. We're going to see two at-bats here, one from Tuesday and one from Wednesday, and I'll show you the big difference. 
On Tuesday night, you're seeing a guy that, if you're reading body language, he's on his heels a little bit. He gets to a 2-0 count here, which is a dream scenario for a cleanup hitter, and he gives you Statue of Liberty, no intentions of swinging. Well, here we go again, another shot, 3-1 pitch. Again, no intention of swinging. And here's a 3-2 fastball right down the middle, 87 miles an hour by you. This is another story here on Wednesday. You're looking at a hitter that's very aggressive, looks like he's ready to attack, maybe a Mike Tyson knockout punch. The 3-0 pitch swing here will tell you more about his mentality than his swing. So you have to like that. Misses a home run by several feet. Now comes the 3-1 pitch in which he is ready to hit. And Angel Hernandez maybe gives him, a, does, does him a little favor. <laughs> and the 3-2 pitch with the same process, bam. Anthony Rizzo, see ya, he checks in. That's interesting. So you're saying a little Mike Tyson, a little aggressive punch is what he's looking to do rather than sit back and let something come to him. But how do you know that? And can yeah. you show us what it looks like? Because I have no idea. Yeah, Kev, one of the things you want to do is you want to read body language. So if I'm at shortstop and I'm looking at Anthony Rizzo on Tuesday night, what you're seeing on Tuesday night is a very passive hitter, a guy that's perhaps trying to walk Pete or maybe just get a flare to left center field. It's not what we're looking for out of our cleanup hitter. Now, what you saw on Wednesday night was a guy that was on his toes a little bit more, more aggressive, and instead of chicken winging it here, he is looking to do absolute damage, just like Mr. October, and that's a different guy. That's who the Cubs need. Well, what you're saying, and I think you t told us that a little while ago, stay off your heels. Yeah. You can't be on the heels when you're in batter's box. You got to be on those balls of your feet. You know, that, and that's what he did, the difference. He, the night before, he was kind of leaning back. Like, he just wasn't aggressive. I mean, he had a lot, a lot of mental things going on. But I think the key for him was that blue pit, that infield single. Mm -hmm. Got him going, got to relax a little bit. I'm sure his teammates were laughing at him. But a hit's a hit is sometimes when you're struggling. The next night, you saw this guy hit two home runs in the same at bat. He's back. They need Rizzo because you, he's key to that offense. You mean this one where the bat splintered into <laughs> eight zillion pieces? Right? We, we got to show you in case you missed it the other night. But you know what? It, it was a base hit in the box score. Pete, what would happen if you did when you hit one of these in your career going back to the bench? I'd have to figure out a way to get there at the clubhouse because Bench Morgan Perez would be back there on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> a man hit that ball? Did you hit that man? Hey. Does your wife play baseball? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Bottom line is, it got, maybe it did get him going, and then the big at bats that Alex talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's for the Cubs. For the Dodgers, look, it's been one guy that's been consistent really for two years in the postseason, and that's Justin Turner. He took some time out with our Tom Verducci. Thanks, Kevin. Well, Justin Turner, you've heard the narrative all year. Dodgers hitting against left-handed pitching. 213, Major League low. What is the story? How do you explain that narrative? And more importantly, how do you change it? Uh, yeah, you know, the, the regular season's a different story. We're in the postseason now. Uh, I thought the other night off Leicester, we did a really good job. We hit a lot of balls hard off him. I think we lined out six or seven times. Uh, Rizzo made an outstanding play on Puig diving in the in the four hole. So uh, we're just going to continue to try to um, take good bat at bats and uh, not chase hits off him. So uh, put a lot of pressure on him on the bases and uh, hopefully get a little bit better results this time. For you, you were one who hit the ball hard off John Lester, but still no hits, 14 at bats against John Lester. He's attacked you with a lot of fastballs. What do you need to do to get to John Lester? Yeah, same thing. Just just try to take a good at bat and, and hit the ball hard somewhere. Don't don't try to chase hits. When you chase hits, uh, you put a little extra pressure on yourself, and, and you know this game's hard enough. So uh, it's just all about taking a good at bat and 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 working counts. And uh, you know if we can do that one through nine in the lineup, uh, get the pitch count up, we're more likely to get some mistakes and hopefully get him out of the game early. Justin, thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Kevin. Justin, Tom, thank. It's been a great couple years with Justin Turner. Good guy who got a chance and has, has turned into a star. And, and the leg kick, Frank, is that a big key to Justin Turner here? Well, the first key to hitting is a workable balance stance. This guy, and the key words there is balance, guys. This guy has to have incredible balance. Any hitter that uses an exaggerated leg kick, you have to be able to be soft and balanced. Right now, he's hitting the ball to all fields. You, you notice the second thing I really noticed with this guy is his short, compact swing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what has produced these, these new power surge that he has. This guy's a special hitter. He's working his tail off. And I love guys like this who go from a utility role to a star because they've earned it. He's worked his butt off. He is using the whole field, no doubt, if you look at his spray chart this year. But in the box, how does balance, how does a leg kick, how does that help him? Well, you have to work on it. I mean, to, to really elevate your leg and stay back on a pitcher is one of the toughest things to do in baseball. I was around one of the best, Harold Baines. He had the exaggerated leg kick, but he stayed behind the ball and used the whole field. 
So what he's doing right now is special and has also peaked his home run totals. You know, Frank, I agree with everything you just said, but what, what he, this is one of my favorite players in the game. He's got a great attitude. He's come back basically from, you know, the black hole. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mets gave up on him. But I had a conversation, two conversations with him this summer, and he basically told me he felt his career was at maybe being over, and he had to go back in the offseason and reconstruct everything, basically tear the whole house down. And he did that over an offseason. What he basically did was he stopped trying to fillet the ball to right field. He started looking for the fastball in, got this fastball leg kick up, and get the ball to left center field. And he's doing exactly that. Will somebody give me a bat? Why do I don't have Pete, Pete, <laughs> That's I mean, a great question. I got more hits than all these guys. <laughs> Here you go, Pete, let us go. Huh? Pete, get in there. Uh, get nah. in that box. We'd love no, to see I'm that. I'm too old to get in there. Oh, come on, Peter, let's see that. Give, it to give us, give us a batty stance. What in there? There he is. <laughs> How would you hit against Lester? Pete, give me your batty stance. My Le Lester? I'd yeah, be Lester. right like this, man. There that he is. is. I'd about. be down there like this. Charlie Charlie strike that, now, now, strike that strike zone. <laughs> serious question, Pete. First pitch against Lester. Are you looking to take looking, or are you looking to swing? I'm take. I'm looking to hack. Hack, okay. Hackman. Call me Hackman. So you're not working to count? Nope. Nope. Okay. He's not going to walk you. Okay. He's not, no, you're he right don't ever that. walk anybody. You're right about that. I just like, watch you guys hit all day long. That's, uh, that's what I'm going <laughs> to sit here and do. All right, good stuff, guys. Talking about some of the best hitters in this game. Hey, look, it was tough sledding for the Cubs bats in games two and three. They were shut out. But you know what? Ten runs last night. How did it happen? We'll find out after the break. And can they stay hot against this guy, Kenta Maeda? He's not been hot, that's for sure. Four innings, four hits, three runs in game number one. He'll get the call for the Dodgers. He has been better at home this year against John Lesta. First pitch, 26 minutes, one second away. Right here at FS1, we're back. Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Thank you for making FS1 America's new number one sports network. That is the one! Who could have predicted that plot twist? Give me more of that. Number one all day. That's the hottest seat in sports media. I love it. Number one in live events. This place will be rocking all night long. And the number one cable network in all of television. And here we go. We got a runner. Hey! Follow me! Better TV it starts now. Red 97! Set! Red 97! Did you say 97? Yes. You know, that reminds me of Geico's 97% customer satisfaction rating. 97%? Helped by Geico's fast and friendly claim service. <laughs> huh. Oh yeah, baby. Geico's as fast and friendly as it gets. <laughs> Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Upgrade your phone system and learn how you can save at vonage.com slash business. This is for everyone. Are you ready? We'll take 16 million tickets, 50,000 foam hats, 2 million of those, and 1 million with cheese. Hot dog, hot dog. What do you want? Hot dog. 3 million hot dogs and goosebumps. We'll need billions of goosebumps. 1 million pregame rituals. Are you done? What else do we need? Jerseys. We'll take all of them. And one almost perfect plan. Click, tap, dip, or swipe. Choose Visa, official payment partner of the NFL.
It's a big college football Saturday. First, UCLA takes on 19th ranked Utah. Then, Baker Mayfield and the Sooners battle Patrick Mahomes and the Red Raiders. A college football doubleheader Saturday. Utah, UCLA at 3.30 Eastern. Oklahoma, Texas Tech at 8 Eastern on Fox. It's time for Dodger Baseball. 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 I'll be seeing you. Swung out and missed a perfect game. In all the old familiar places. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. In every lovely summer's day. Got it. They've done it. Always think of you that way. This is Vin Scully wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon wherever you may be. I'll be seeing you. Nobody better and Vin Scully in attendance at the Dodger game tonight looking for a little magic. Well, it's pretty simple, right? You need hits to score runs. You need runs to win ball games. In games two and three of this NLCS, Cubs did little of either. And in a pivotal game four, one thing was for certain. The bats had to come back to life. We welcome you to Dodger Stadium, game four of the National League Championship Series. A really important game for the Cubs tonight. We just got to keep fighting. We know what we're capable of doing. Our pitching has been doing a good job. We just offensively have struggled. Throw down to second base and picked off. Contreras' pick at second, that was very large. Put a whole different look on the game. It is time for a Cubs rally. They have gone 21 innings now without scoring a run. He bunts toward third. Beautiful bunt. Bunt single Ben Zobris. A little looper. It's going to drop. Base hit. Now you hear the Cub fans. Bontreras lines one toward left. Base hit. Cubs lead one to nothing. Once you get one, then you can get three or four. Now how about the bunt gets the whole thing going by your number four hitter? Baez works a great at bat. Contreras works a great at bat. Hayward does what he needs to do. Grounder to second. And then, of course, Addison uh, back to normal. Cubs lead 4 nothing. I didn't really go into panic mode at all. I knew my work ethic was there. Addison Russell smiling for the first time in several days. Back to the wall. Gone. Anthony Rizzo with a home run. You got to be ready for that big situation. It takes one at bat. It just takes one. Today was a must win for us. To break out, see everybody breaking out was uh, really huge. When you start hitting it is contagious defense this whole game it's very exciting it's very exciting stuff you guys over dramatize everything we are in hollywood great points <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah john lackey's always fiery right so uh there you go cubs offense a big goose egg shut out games two and three and they put up a 10 spot last night extra base hits home runs Six hits with runners in scoring position, they did it all. And when you, you look, you could break it down eight ways till Sunday. But Pete, you look at that middle of the order, don't you? Rizzo and Bryant. Well, it seems to me in the past, uh, you always had two guys that offset each other. There's, there's very rarely to have more than one or two guys that are MVP candidates. I can think of Maris and Mantle. Wow. Eddie Mantle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes. Mort. Pump. You have a fever? Yeah, I do. You know, about a Yankee? Two great Yankees. <laughs> how about, how about uh, Eddie Matthews and Hank Aaron? Okay. W what about Mays and McCovey? You know, great players always have a great player in front of them, a great player in back of them. And the Cubs just happen to have guys that I think is going to come two and three in the MVP balloting. So that's how important they are to each other because they feed off each other. That's the way it is in the, in the world of baseball. You want to out outdo the guys in front of you. You want to do what he did and more. And that's what Rizzo has done all year. And that's what Brian has done all year. That's why they're both very similar. 290 batting averages, to close to 30 home runs, over 100 RBIs. They're, they're, a, they're a duet, man. Nope. I think you're right on, Pete. I mean, this well, guy Rizzo. You, Frank. I Rizzo, Rizzo is that glue guy for me on that team. And when Rizzo and Brian is going, this team rides out. I mean, when these guys are swinging the bat, they can hurt your bat. And they've done it all year long, and that's why you're looking at a team that's got 103 regular season victims. But, Pete, those, they're great too, but it needs nine players. What that's I tough. liked about the Cubs yesterday, their approach was much better. They swung at strikes, a lot more A swings, 
And even uh, Hayward, he had a couple good at-bats right. with a lot of good right. swings. Um, look, 10 runs was big, Frank, mm -hmm. but it started small. It started with a bunt, mm -hmm. two broken bat hits, and that's how things get going. I like it. Yeah, so the bottom line is you're saying because Rizzo showed up, now that inspires Brian a little bit? To a little bit, yeah. It's, it's like there's a, there was a guy who wore number two, used to inspire a guy named Alex Rodriguez. I think his name was Derry Jeter. Didn't, didn't, didn't he turn you on the way he played? I loved I it. Sure you did. That's why you responded the way you did, man. You're, Absolutely. You're, you're a great player, man. <laughs> you know what? Let, let, let me, let me say this. I, I, we had that with, with Jeter. We also had that with Ken Griffey Jr. I knew walking to the ballpark, mm -hmm. I was going to see the best player in the world. And I was 18. Mm -hmm. He was 24. And what a great role model. Me coming out of basically high school graduation, mm -hmm. showing up to Seattle, which I didn't even know where it was. And All right. I have Ken Griffey Jr. there. I, I got to get Frank Thomas and, and George Bell in there, too, right? <laughs> we, we, we appreciate Albert that. Bell. John Lester appreciates Bell. that. I got to get Cubs both of Dodgers, up. game five. Coming your go way. Frankie, go Bellman. <laughs>
Kershaw in his performance tonight. He has been perfect. Dodgers win it and shut out the Cubs. This ball, gone. Cubs have tied this NLCS. And so it is a game five with the Cubs and the Dodgers. And it's time now for the national anthem. Let's head out to Dodger Stadium and listen in to public address announcer Todd Lights. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you please rise, kindly remove your hats, and join in the singing of our national anthem. Let tonight by a conjunction entertainment gospel recording artist, accompanied by Dieter Rule. Please welcome. Keith Williams, Jr. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam? broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets raised In wow. a row. Robert's How can a big man get that high? Are you were close in here. Oh, oh, not even close. I mean, you would have destroyed all the windows if you kept <laughs> going, but you, you get the idea. That's uh, that's close. So Dave Roberts changed up the lineup tonight in a big way against John Lester. They're trying to get a sniff against this guy. And it's interesting, but I know there's one guy in the, uh, that's not in there that you would like to see in there. Yeah, Kevin, there is. And before that, I'd like to say that I think today's the biggest game of, of, of the series, obviously. The winner of tonight's games advances to the World Series. That's my call. But it's mm. Chase Utley. For me, he has to be in the lineup. He reminds me of a Danny Ainge, a glue. He's the winner. There's so many things he does to help you win a game. And by the way, he's the most experienced player of all 50 players on, on both rosters. Wow. Well, this is the driver's uh, seat game. Whoever wins this game, uh, they'll have nobody but themselves to play if they don't go to the World Series. And it would be nice if the Dodgers somehow get there we would have a Kiki against a Coco. <laughs> huh? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Two of your kids' names, right? Yeah, never. You know, I like all the changes in the Dodgers lineup tonight. Just kidding. I yeah. mean, when it's not working against left-handers, you got to do something. I think Dave Roberts mixed up this lineup. We could question a few, but Gonzalez going to six, but they got a chance, a better hitting chance with these right-handed hitters than mixing all the lefties throughout the lineup. Now, we'll see if it works. That's the big deal. Roberts is not afraid. He's made some bold moves. Carlos Ruiz <laughs> cleaning up tonight. But now the, the real key is, does it work? You bring Gonzalez down to six. You put Kike Hernandez leading off. Can they finally sniff a run against Lester? Yeah, Frank, I'm on the other side of that trade mm -hmm. with you. I don't like the moves. Okay. I think stability is important. Less is more in October. Let's see how I play Let's now. get oh, ready for some base. First ball. pitch, oh. Petey, let's go yeah. to it. After Chavez Seven revealing games. the guy. Seven games. Seven Joe games. Joe Buck, John Seven. Smoltz. <laughs> see you later. Units. <laughs> Units. <laughs> Kevin, thank you, and everybody, welcome to Game 5 of the 2016 National League Championship Series. With a series tied at two apiece, the Chicago Cubs take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. 
Now, welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. The Hall of Famer John Smoltz is coming right up. Well, let's see what's happened over the last 24 or so hours. The Cubs came into last night's game having been shut out in games two and three, and they went off. They came up with 10 runs on 13 hits. They even this series, and now they go back to their number one starter tonight in John Lester. And in general, John Smoltz, the pitching matchup is really interesting to look at. There's so much strategy when you think about it. Because you're looking at Maeda, you're looking at John Lester, a rematch of game one, and everything's hanging in the balance. It really is. Two different strategies, but the same goal. Get to the closer, six outs. Who does that first? Well, John Lester has the ability to go seven innings, possibly eight. He wasn't super sharp in game one, but look for him to be more effective. He's been so good in the second half. His numbers are ridiculous. Only one loss that last game in Cincinnati. John Lester has the stuff and it has the success against the Dodgers to do exactly what Joe Madden wants. Six outs to Chapman. And let's go to the next step. This is a race to the closer for each side. And when you talk to Joe Madden, he says he wants it to be a race of one. He wants Lester to go seven and hand the ball for two innings to a role as Chapman for the Dodgers different story same plan at the back end of the bullpen. Yeah when you start a game like this in the postseason you never think that the first second or third inning you'll be looking over your shoulder but I think that's what Dave Roberts has gotten planned. He's got his bullpen ready. Kenta Maeda if he can give him three or four innings that would be unbelievable more pieces to get to Jansen look for that to be the case and the Dodgers try to create chaos for John Lester. How about this when an LCS has been tied two games apiece the team that wins game five has won nine of the last ten. And LCS is a lot on the line here tonight before we go back to Chicago tonight game five on FS1. How much can change in 24 hours. How about the psyche of an entire city. After the offense was shut down in game three anxiety fear and doubt crept into the minds of Cubs nation. But after the bats exploded for 10 runs in game four a rush of euphoria joy and relief swept back over the city. What words will describe tonight? It's game five of the NLCS. Hey guys. Hey. Oh, is this the new boyfriend? Yes. <laughs> we haven't met yet. You're the sweetest. Yes. Do you want to hold him? Hold my baby now. So easy to dip, so hard to put down. Rolled chicken tacos. Tasty shredded chicken all rolled up with your choice of dips. Back at Taco Bell. Viagra single packs. So guys with ED can take Viagra when they need it. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain or adempus for pulmonary hypertension. Your blood pressure could drop to an unsafe level. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra single packs. Is that iced tea? Nope, it's lemonade. Is that iced tea? Lemonade. Iced tea? It's with these people, man. Lemonade. Read the sign, lemonade. Read it. Okay. Delicious. Iced tea at a lemonade stand? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Marin saved by switching to Geico. Oh, it's lemonade, man. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Yeah, I'm just not having any luck dating. <laughs> Hello! <clears throat> then why don't you try eHarmony? We can find the perfect person for you. We've helped over a million people get married. <laughs> that sounds great. Stop waiting. Start communicating for free today. Celebrate your freedom of choice for our 45th president. 
Hillary Clinton, or Donald Trump. Show pride and support with a well-known American icon. Ch -ch -ch Chia. With Chia Hillary Clinton and Chia Donald Trump. Just water and watch them both grow. Own the special limited edition. Chia Trump and Chia Hillary Clinton available at Target and Kmart. Chia Obama and Chia Sanders also available at Chia.com and Amazon. A great collectible gift. It is warm, 93 degrees for Game 5 of the NLCS as we join public address announcer Todd Lights. It's time now for the words that are recited before each and every game here at Dodger Stadium. Please welcome back to the field, Dodger greats Eric Karras and Steve Garvey. Take it away, fellas. You have been the 10th player, the wind beneath the wings of this franchise all through the decades. And you're going to do that tonight. Eric, we usually say something else, don't we? Well, we say something, but I think there's a man in the house that's better suited to do it. Take it away, Ben! It's time for Dodger Baseball! Famer and a national treasure, and one of the most important figures in the history of this game, Vince Scully, with a surprise for the fans here, for the players here, for the umpires and the other broadcasters. How in the world Smoltz here? We're going to sit here with him down to our left. We're inside the Vince Scully press box. Vince Scully sat behind the microphone for this organization for 67 years. And it came to an end here in 2016. 88 years old and as strong as ever. Let's go down to the field and check in with Ken Rosenthal. Joe, the changes in the Dodgers lineup stem from their season-long struggles against left-handed pitching. What they're trying to do is stack the hitters with the best chance against John Lester at the top of their order. Kike Hernandez batting leadoff. He could distract Lester if he gets on base. Carlos Ruiz batting cleanup. He's 0 for 16 with four strikeouts lifetime against Lester, but he did hit the ball hard twice against him in game one. And finally, Adrian Gonzalez. He's batting sixth for the first time since June 2012, but Dave Roberts envisions him potentially coming up in a two-out RBI situation. Now, for more on how the Dodgers plan to attack Lester, here's Tom Verducci. Thanks, Ken. Well, you can boil down that game plan to one word, disruption. The Dodgers want to exploit Lester's trouble throwing to bases two ways. Number one, expand the lead off the bases. Dodger coaches gave the players a 20-minute video tutorial of how the Milwaukee Brewers did that. And number two, show bunt early and often in counts. Bench coach Bob Guerin told his players when they did that 10 times in game one, Lester threw only two strikes and it also forces the middle infielders and corner infielders to play in sacrificing range. So Joe, let the engagementship begin. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how these two starters get along tonight. You've got a 19 game winner in John Lester, and you've got a right-hander in Kenta Maeda who has hit the skids here over his last four starts. Here's the Cubs lineup, Dexter Fowler, then Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, their numbers to the right, what they've done in this postseason. In the middle, Zobras, Baez, and Hayward. Addison Russell went deep last night. David Ross catches John Lester, who pitches in bats night. Glad you're with us. Glad Vin Scully is down to our left. Off we go in game number five. Ball one outside. Well, for Maeda, that's an important pitch to get. He has to live down in the zone. He throws a sinker and a four-seamer. I'd like to see him throw more four seamers against the Cubs. That will get out of play for strike one. But that's easier said than done. He has not had a lot of confidence in his fastball in general. Most of his action pitches and the result of at bats are going to come with off speed, primarily the slider 
and the changeup. First year pitching in the United States. He's in the first year of an eight year deal. A tremendous performer in Japan pitching for Hiroshima. But there is more rest between starts in Japanese professional baseball. Here's a 1 1. This one up the middle and a good start for the Cubs. Fowler is on to start the night. Dexter Fowler gets his sixth hit of this series. Checks on the center fielder Jack Peterson. Jock has got Howie Kendrick to his right. Yasiel Puig to his left around the infield. Turner Seeger, Kike Hernandez, and Adrian Gonzalez. Carlos Ruiz, a longtime Philadelphia Philly, picked up from the Phillies in season in a deal between the Dodgers and Philadelphia. He's in that important spot trying to get Kenta Maeda through this start. Here's Bryant, ball one low. And just to finish on that September. Is he running out of gas? That has to be asked. First four starts of September, Maeda was great. Three and one. ERA just over two. Opponents hit just over 200. But there are the last four starts, an ERA just under 10. And the Dodgers have lost all four of them. Bryant. 2 and 0. Oh. Well, what happens is you can't force velocity, and he was already unhappy with two of the pitches so far. It has to be natural, and to your point, Joe, I think you can leak a little bit and try to create a little bit too much when you're run when your tank's getting empty. And there you see the pitch just outside by a fraction. Bryant did not have a hit in last night's game, but he reached base three times. Count in his favor here, and as always, for coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune to Fox Deportes. Game five travel day tomorrow game six on Saturday Hendricks and Kershaw. Two oh. High drive in the air to left back into the corner with room is Kendrick. One on one out and Fowler retreats to first. Ball was up there a long time. You see not much win. But he gets back in plenty of position and then comes in. Just to show you what kind of year it's been for the Dodgers starters and what kind of year it's been for Maeda. He led the staff in wins, in innings, in starts, in strikeouts. Now that is always reserved for Clayton Kershaw, and of course his injury did that. But just the fact that when they didn't sign Granke and they were able to sign Maeda and not know exactly what they were getting, they got a solid year. And 16 wins. Owen won this postseason, lost in the divisional round to the Washington Nationals. No decision in game one of this NLCS. That's down and in ball one to Rizzo, who broke out last night. Three for his last three after striking out in his first two at bats, changing bats. The one that belongs to Matt Caesar, who's not on the active roster. We hope to talk to Matt during the game tonight. And after that, when Homer, two run single, single, they got their big guy back. 1 0. There's that changeup. That has got to be a pitch. He's going to have to be effective. If he's not commanding his fastball or getting the corners, you see the changeup grip, great arm action, and Rizzo out in front. And there you go from game four with Caesar's bat better than with his own. So, whose bat do you think he has in his hands right now? His. Caesar's. 1 1 pitch instead of check on Fowler, who has a small lead. So it's not a Cubs team that's going to run a ton. They don't really manufacture runs. They just slug. They had the fifth highest total in home runs in the National League. In 199 during the regular season. Last night hit two. Runner is going and that's down into the corner. Fair ball. Fowler flying to third. Fowler coming to the plate. Rizzo four for his last four. And the Cubs lead one nothing.
The bat of Matt Caesar and another hit off the barrel of it. Yeah, he throws a breaking ball, and you see how how much he stays inside does Rizzo. And you can tell the difference of four at bats now versus the whole postseason. And I know the bat's a cute story, but it's not the bat. Right. He's getting better swings. He's seeing better pitches. He's swinging at strikes. But Caesar says, whatever I can do to help out. <laughs> you want my shoes? Take it all. One to nothing. Cubs on top. And the batter will be Zobrist. How about Rizzo on fire and a breaking ball in for a strike? Well, this happened in game one for Maeda in Chicago. Got off to a rough start and then kind of battled his way and kept the team at the three run mark. But I don't think the leash tonight is going to be very long if, if Dave Roberts reads that he is not effective in keeping the Cubs batters off balance. How about this stat? The Chicago Cubs are 46 and 13 when Dexter Fowler gets on to lead off a game. They're winning at a 78% clip. When their leadoff man gets on, and now he's come around to score, running on the pitch, and that allowed him to score easily on the double by Rizzo. One ball, one strike on Zobrist. Two and one. Ben got the four run rally started last night in the fourth inning with a bunt base hit. Nothing nothing game. He got a base hit. Baez a base hit. Contreras an RBI single. RBI ground out then a two run shot by Russell. And that would be all the Cubs would need in game four. They won it 10 2. And now Ruiz will go out and talk with Maeda. Home plate umpire tonight is Alfonso Marquez. First base, it's Ted Barrett. At second base, it's Bill Welke. He started the series in the replay office in New York. Eric Cooper. Gary Cedarstrom is the left field umpire, the crew chief, and Angel Hernandez worked the plate last night. He's out and right. Paul Nowert, who umped the first two games on the field, is in New York. 2 1. 3 and 1 with Baez on deck. Well, with confidence, you know, the Cubs start controlling the strike zone. And what I mean by that is they don't expand it. They're taking the pitches that are balls and they're swinging at the ones that they want in the last game and a half. And for Maeda, he has to control the strike zone, meaning he's got to have it in his favor to be successful. A walk, the first of the inning in trouble. For Maeda continues. And what I mean by that is he doesn't have the stuff that he can come back in the count and actually get a lot of swing and misses. He relies on the finesse. His fastball command, you can tell at times he just doesn't have the confidence to trust that he can pitch to contact with his fastball. So it almost is a show pitch, and he's utilizing the curveball changeup slider as more of the, the weaponry that he would like to get hitters out on. Baez has had a great postseason. Javier is hitting 333, 4 for 14 within this series, 10 for 30 in the two series so far. And this is a key spot for Chicago with their ace left hander, John Lester, on the mound. How big will this inning be right now? Just one run on the board. Baez takes a ball. Maeda snaps at it as he gets it back from Ruiz, and there's some angst in the big crowd here at Dodger Stadium that will get bigger as we go as people fight the traffic to get into this ballpark, not liking what they're seeing so far. Uh, and, and for Dave Roberts, a keen eye on how long before the phone rings. I know that sounds crazy in a first inning, but this is a swing game that you have your ace pitching tomorrow.
2 and 0. Oh. You got to stay in this game as long as possible and create that same feeling that you can give Clayton K Kershaw an opportunity to close this thing out. It, it's just a, because of him there's so much drama. It's such a weird game because everyone wanted to talk about should he have pitched today and then come back in game 7. Either way Maeda was going to pitch and they chose to pitch him here at home. Baez unloads on a 2 0 pitch and this is where the advantage of the Cubs who have a deeper rotation they go one through four. They got through the division series clean so they didn't have to use Lester twice so they were lined up the Dodgers didn't. They're not as deep in the rotation they had to use Kershaw three times in that series. So they came in a little backward and had Clayton for game two and now they'll have him for game six on Saturday. But to give you more perspective on that no starts of three days rest for the Cubs three for the Dodgers as you mentioned three on regular turn for the Dodgers only one for the Cubs five days twice for the Cubs and six plus days six times so that's how fresh their starting rotation is and the Dodgers have had to squeeze as much as they can out of a smaller core of guys. Counts two and one with two on one out a run home. There's a strike two and two. See, and that's the four seam that I, I, I still think has some life on it. He loves that two seam movement, but it gets too lateral. There's the four seam grip. There's the rotation. And you can see it surprised Baez to where he couldn't catch up. Lead runner is Rizzo. Trail runner is Zobrist. One out. 2 2 pitch. Got him on the outside corner. Two out. And again, another great pitch. He got the benefit of the call, okay? But that four seamer holds the plane a lot more. The general rule. Two seamers are going to be movement. Four seamers are going to be more riding pitches. Stay on the plane that they're thrown at. Baez says, I wasn't going to be able to hit it either way. Well, that was a big pitch for Maeda to get that call on a ball that looked outside to Baez. And instead of a 3 2 count with two on one out, it's two on two out for Jason Hayward, who has two hits this postseason. One of them against Maeda. And that's outside ball one. Yeah, he got a triple. He got another rally going for the Cubs. A good matchup for Hayward is Maeda, and the way that he delivers the ball, and the way that Hayward likes the ball to be hit. Hayward pops it up back behind the plate. Out of play. Well you mentioned what Fowler does for the Cubs we are, came across an interesting stat here when Jason Hayward scores a run for the Cubs in the second half they were 22 and 2 overall 46 and 8. It's a big position down toward the bottom of the lineup hitting sixth which is 230 during the regular season. First year of a big contract that has an opt out clause in it. For Jason Hayward, after signing from St. Louis, came up with the Braves. Here's a 1 1. And speaking with the Braves, I remember Chipper Jones saying in spring training when he first came to Big League camp, the sound off the bat of Jason Hayward was unlike any other sound that Chipper had heard. And certainly he took off in his career with 22 homers. And but then he had some injuries and certainly the getting drilled in the face is not anything any hitter ever wants to have happen to him. 2 1. In at the knees, 2 and 2. And you see the guard that he still wears right there protecting that jaw where he had his jaw broken. Crowd's back.
Shattered back. That will go foul. And a break for the Dodgers as that had spin on it to take it off the grass and across the line. Yeah, that was pretty funky. The way the he's throwing a curveball, so you see the spin. It had to be right off the end of the bat. And it's, that's exactly the way it was. Splintered it. And this ball, usually when it gets off the grass, will, depending on what kind of team you have, will be depending on what kind of grade that dirt. Flashback, John was talking about it. 2013, it's just hard to watch. And that's why he has that protection on the right side of his batting helmet. Looking for a big hit for Chicago. Maeda looking for his way out of the inning. Sometimes previous at bats will change a pitcher's mindset and what they want to do and keep them from going to the formula of getting somebody out. So that triple that Jason Hayward hit may still be in the mind of that fastball that he threw in Chicago. Breaking ball right there hung over the middle of the plate. Jason just pulled it foul. Two two. will take it a run was home there were two on with one out then back-to-back -back strikeouts and after a half in game five Cubs lead one to nothing I'll you back is this my car State Farm knows that for every one of what? those moments this is ridiculous there's one of these is this my car what this is ridiculous this can't be happening this can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! <laughs> That's why State Farm is there. What a day. With car insurance for when things go wrong. What a day. But also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. This is Lynchburg, Tennessee. This is how many people were born here. This is how many are named Hiawatha Kitty McGee. This guy keeps the town dry. These guys would prefer it a little wet. This many are proud of what we make here. This is how many will go around bragging about it. This is our town, for 150 years, the home of Jack Daniels. If you can't get here, just look for one of our postcards. They look like this. This $6.99 any deal is too good to be true. Two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any recipe, no questions asked. Well, I got some questions. Does that include meat lovers? Yeah. Are you a hologram? What? The $6.99 any deal. Is it proof that no one out pizzas the hut? Studies show the average attention span is eight seconds. And only your love could fill in my cup, cause I'm hollow. Yeah, I'm hollow. Good thing the redesigned Kia Forte comes with available autonomous emergency braking. It can help you stop even if your mind starts wandering. If you have a typical airline credit card, you only earn double miles when you buy stuff from that airline. Wait, is this where you typically shop? You should be getting double miles on every purchase. Switch to the Capital One Venture card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seriously, double miles, everywhere. What's in your wallet? <coughs> hey, Julie, I know today's critical, but I really need a sick day. Dads don't take sick days. Dads take DayQuil Severe, the non-drowsy, coughing, aching fever, sore throat, stuffy head, no sick days medicine. MLB.com at bat, the official postseason app of Major League Baseball. Well, John Lester, when he was putting his mind and his game plan together for this start, could not have possibly expected this lineup. It is a much different looking lineup. They start with Kike Hernandez and right on cue there he is squaring around showing bunt. Trying to get Lester flustered but it's Hernandez Turner Seager.
Carlos Ruiz batting cleanup then Howie Kendrick Gonzalez batting sixth. Yasiel Puig Peterson eighth. The counts two and zero oh, again showing bunt. That's what Tom Verducci talked about before tonight's first pitch. Show bunt because Lester doesn't like to field his position throw to first. Bother him when they get on the bases. Here's a 2 0. 3 0. Well, normally when you look at a lineup card, you know what guys have numbers against you, but I'm sure that John looked at this lineup card and circled the guys he could not afford to get on base because of speed. A four pitch walk to Kike Hernandez. And that's the game plan of Dave Roberts and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And another game plan is he never really put consecutive left handers together to give John Lester an opportunity to wiggle through some during his lineup. So two righties, a lefty, two righties, a lefty, a righty, lefty, and the pitcher. So I think there's all kinds that goes into construction of your lineup. But more importantly, to your point, he wants to create the most chaos he can. 14 straight times Justin Turner has reached base safely in a postseason game. The key phrase make John Lester uncomfortable. Again, showing Barton finally a strike. John Lester does not like to throw to first. Because of that, look how far Hernandez is off the bag. This is as much a mind game as it is a baseball game against Lester. Well, I mean, you have to because he's had tremendous success against the Dodgers. Ball one. The only thing you worry about if you're on the base pass with that tremendous lead you can get, and if you don't go, you got to be wary of the back pick. And you saw Ross right there come up firing. They've been able to do that on several occasions. That cast powered by Amazon Web Services. Joe Madden, Chris Bazio, Mike Borzello, anybody who can get John Lester to listen has told him, do not worry about the runner at first base. Let us worry about it. Let David Ross behind the plate worry about it. Get the hitter. I, I just, I'm amazed more guys aren't going, though. I just don't understand. It's one thing to make somebody uncomfortable and add value to the guy at the plate by seeing better pitches. But the reality is, he's not throwing the first. You get a big enough lead, you go on first mo movement, and you create the stress at second base. A strikeout and a big out for Lester. The one way Lester and Ross can combat it to a certain degree as you look at the strikeout pitch he gets a fastball by him is Lester's relatively quick to the plate and Ross can still throw. So it won't matter if a guy's got a 30 foot lead over at first base but they are a good tandem in that regard. Well and that's why if you get a big lead you got to go if you get a big lead and don't go it doesn't serve the purpose. It's only bringing in that back pick that you talked about. Seeger strike one and down to a knee he goes. Let's go down to Tom Verducci. Yeah down here Joe it almost sounds like a little league game the Dodgers bench alive every time that Hernandez showed bunt and every time he danced off the base trying to get inside the head of John Lester. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. A walk, then a strikeout. And now Seeger with Ruiz on deck. I, I still maintain it won't do anything to John Lester. That dancing over there does nothing. You've got to show you're willing to steal. Once you steal, now it does something. Center, it will drop. 
Fowler comes up ready to throw, and Hernandez holds it second, two on, one out. And the reason I say that is it's very difficult, based on the numbers he's had against the Dodgers, to string three, four hits in a row. So if he's standing on second base and creating the stress at second base, that base hit scores a run. Until somebody has the guts to get the lead and steal, it's not going to have a great effect, as people think, on John Lester. Well, they're the career numbers for Ruiz against Lester. 0 for 16, four strikeouts. He's been hit once. He's in the cleanup spot tonight for the Dodgers. Now that's a huge lead at second base. That's a lead that you need to go. Second base is where you can dis distract a, a starter. At least that's where I always felt like I had more concentration on making sure that stealing third base, which is easier, especially with a right-handed batter up, Ross having to throw around the, the batter. I mean, they're giving you an out if Lester would throw, but he doesn't feel comfortable. That's a ball. Tight strike zone tonight. Ruiz with a count 1-0. and oh. yeah, It certainly has seemed that it's no lenient either side. Lester has better stuff to live in the strike zone do than does Ma Maeda. Oh. And now Lester stares in, and Ross is going to visit. Meanwhile, just something to file in the back of your mind. Corey Seager with his first big swing. He went down on a knee. He ends up getting a base hit as he floated one into left center. Watch him when he gets around first. Keep an eye on that. Two on, one out. 2 0 the count on Ruiz. Foul. Good play down the line. Wow, what a catch. <laughs> that short hop saved somebody. That's why you come to the game sleeveless. <laughs> Out there, you're going to see him carrying a glove. What a play. Oh, he had his eye on it the whole time, too. He trapped it. <laughs> two and one the count. Two on, one out. Cubs lead one to nothing. Ruiz. That was called strike two. A little bit of a delay in that. And Ruiz talks to Alfonso Marquez. Yeah, I thought it was the umpire that said outside. I think yeah. Ruiz said outside. You heard the same thing yeah. I did. Yeah. So the count two and two, two on, one out. High fly ball into right. Hayward backpedals. Kike Hernandez will end up at third with two out. I'm just telling you, until they start taking those bases that they're giving them, you, you make the hole at bat change. That fly ball could drive in a run. You, you're doing more service to your teammates by being able to get a base than to distract John. So it'd be from this point on, if the right guys keep getting on, you've got to take the base, in my mind, if you're the Dodgers. Inning falls to Howie Kendrick with runners at the corners, two out. Veteran infielder, outfielder, longtime L.A. Angel. That is a fair ball. Bryant inning over. And after all that, the 19 game winner, John Lester, puts up a zero. One to nothing, Cubs, after one in game five. Prop 61 only covers 12% of Californians, like some state government employees and prisoners. The other 88% of Californians would see an increase in their prescription drug costs. I'm telling my patients, and I'm urging you to vote no on 61. Well, if you want to sing out, sing out. And if you want to be free, be free. Because there's a million things to be. You know that there are.
And if you want to be me, be me. And if you want to be you, be you. Cause there's a million things to do. You know that there are. This man creates software used by this bank to protect this customer who lives here and flies to Hong Kong to visit this company that makes smartphones used by this vice president, this little kid, oops, and this obstetrician who works across the street from this man who creates software. They all have insurance crafted personally for them, not just coverage, craftsmanship, not just insured, Chubb insured. His Lees aren't just jeans to him. They're freedom pants. Move your Lee. We should have made a deal with them when we could have. Eeny, maybe, miny, mo. <laughs> the Walking Dead season premiere. Go to amc.com for local listings. The California Medical Association, representing 41,000 doctors, opposes Prop 61. So does every leading veterans group in California, and every daily newspaper is urging no on 61. The more you know about Prop 61, the less you'll like it. Vote no. Welcome back to the NLCS on FS1. Tonight's telecast presented by T-Mobile One. Beautiful night, it's warm, 93 degrees here on the 20th of October. Game five, series tied, two apiece. Here's Addison Russell. What a night he had last night. Three hits, a two run home run. Scored twice. And there is not much leeway in this strike zone save for one pitch to Javier Baez. Yeah, and Maeda has made a decision to stay breaking balls with Russell. First game, all breaking balls except for one fastball. Ball two. I just think sometimes a pitcher, even though you've got to establish your fastball. And he did a better job there wiggling out of that first inning, blowing some fastballs by the Cub hitters. You gotta show you got confidence in it. Russell sitting on a pitch. And it was not a 2 0 fastball. That bends in for strike one. Good pitch by Maeda. David Ross will follow, and then the pitcher, John Lester. That's foul. But that hesitation that May Maeda has, when you're in timing, you don't get underneath pitches. When you're out of timing and your rhythm is not where it needs to be, that little hesitation, you start dipping. You start getting underneath the baseball. It starts having a lateral loop in it, that slider, instead of turning the corner. And every once in a while, he's gotten away with some fat ones over the middle of the plate. Two two. Got him looking good breaking ball one away strikeout number three three in a row. Well, when you see this kind of unorthodox motion watch the front shoulder if it stays lateral and goes to home plate and doesn't dip like it does in this pitch everything's pretty good right there and then it'll have that late break and spin that the hitter doesn't recognize. And the game plan was the same sliders. Sliders and sliders to Russell. Now David Ross. Kenta Maeda was a terrific pitcher in his homeland of Japan. I mentioned the Hiroshima Carp. Eight pro seasons. Ross strike one went 97 and 67, an ERA of 2.39 in 218 games. And the two-time winner of the Sawamura Award, which goes to Japan's best pitcher. He's definitely trying to get accustomed to the style over here. On the rest, he gets between starts. In Japan, the starters pitch one day a week. Yep. 
So you're the Tuesday guy or you're the Friday guy. And this season Kenta in his first year with the Dodgers made 14 of his 34 starts on the regular four days rest. 20 with five or more days. One one. Yeah. And at the Ooh. knees strike two. Two and two. Well, one thing he's going to have to do a little better job of is pitch to the guy on deck a little better than he did in game one. He walked him twice. So, with this part of the lineup, Ross would love to get on base to have his partner behind him be able to bunt. But Lester with two walks off of Maeda in game one. Missed in a full count. These are great pitchers' pitches. Might have been a little low, and you can see that Ross at the last minute is too late outside. With one out, Ross hammers one foul. The 39 year old out in front of it. They just look great when you're out on the mound pitching. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you look in there, you look, you look, you're trying to, you just see it such a distorted view because you're not finish, finishing in a perfect place. And you go off of the catcher. If the catcher's glove goes, doesn't move, you think it's a strike. And if you don't get enough of those, you got to go in and tell your catcher, hey, you're too far off the plate. I need you more on the plate. Like Ruiz was intent on the fastball away, and Maeda wouldn't go for it. So after a while, David Ross steps out. 0 for 3 in game one. 1 for 9 this postseason, but it was a home run. Outside for a one out walk. John It'll bring in John Lester. I know you got the luxury of the pitcher coming behind you, but you really want to face the pitcher, and you got to make Ross do something via the hit. So now John, more than likely, is going to bunt right here. And Turner will be in, and Gonzalez will charge as the pitch is being thrown. Lester did have six hits during the regular season. John mentioned the two walks in game one. He's 0 for 2 so far this postseason. Playing it straight, showing no signs of a bunt, taking the ball. Now the Dodgers don't know what to do. Turner backed up a couple steps at third. And Gary Jones goes through the signs, the third base coach for Joe Madden. In the air to left, back is Kendrick. Two out. Must have liked his BP or something. <laughs> Interesting approach. The batter will be Fowler, who singled and scored his first time up. That stat we said at the end of our opening that when an LCS has been tied at two games apiece, the team that wins game five has won nine of the last ten series. And add to that Kershaw looming in game six. So here are the Cubs, if they get a win here tonight, the best Kershaw can do. On Saturday is force a game seven if he shuts him down. On the other hand, if the Dodgers win tonight, they have Kershaw going to the mound trying to end it and send them to their first World Series since 1988. That's why this game's so intriguing. This game right here will be played for the Dodgers like the seventh game of any series. He will not allow any scenario 
that is Dave Roberts to not utilize his bullpen with the day off tomorrow. He'll treat it like an elimination game. Two good friends there. Bobby Valentine on the right. Tommy Lasorda the 89 year old Hall of Famer who has two world championships and a gold medal. To his credit. And it was good to see Tommy here yesterday. And back again for game five. Two one pitch now to Fowler. Inside corner two and two. Really trying to mix it up against Fowler. Change up might give him a little problem. Off speed looking for the fastball. Fowler not afraid to get two strikes on him. Maeda off the mound. Inning over. Gets around the one out walk to Ross. Gonzalez Puig Peterson coming up for the Dodgers down one. This is Lulu, our newest dog. Mom didn't want another dog. She says it's too much work. Lulu's hair just floats. Oh, help me! Mom, check this out. Wow. So for sweeper and dusters, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Sticks to this better than it sticks to Lulu. That's your hair, Lulu. Mom, can we have another dog? <laughs> Trap and lock. Up to four times more dirt, dust, and hair than the store brand. Stop cleaning. Start swiffering. I'm here in Bristol, Virginia, and now I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. On this side of the road is Virginia, and on this side, it's Tennessee. No matter which state in the country you live in, you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to GEICO. Look, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Tennessee. Virginia, Tennessee. And now I'm in uh, Virginia C. See how much you could save on car insurance. Or am I in Tennessee? Hmm. The storm is coming, and my son is walking right into it. Rated M for Mature. Buy Gears 4 and get four free games. The Cowboys have no defense. They're nothing. They've been nothing for the last four years. Shan Moved to the city, but I feel all alone. My only friend left is this here phone. I'm missing country roads and open skies. Country girls keep both feet on the ground. But city boys online are just messing around. I feel so lonely here, I'm gonna cry. But now I know you don't have to be a farmer to join FarmersOnly.com. Every week, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah brings you the news that really matters. Trump scandals right now are like when the first black guy joined white sports. People are like, I had no idea that was possible. Oh, my God. I love Kim Bold. I love this guy so much. And it's not just me. You know right now, Hillary's campaign is just analyzing everything about him. She's going to show up at the third debate in a red sweater and a fake mustache. Plus, don't miss our continuing coverage of election 2016. The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. New tonight at 11 on Comedy Central. John Lester will go back to work. Six, seven, eight hitters for the Dodgers. One to nothing, Chicago. Gonzalez, Puig, and Peterson. Even Gonzalez is showing bunt. And slashes at it, fouls it away. It's an epidemic in this lineup. That's what they're trying to do to John Lester. And I know we've probably already worn it out, but just remember they're trying to keep John Lester uncomfortable. Field the ball or make a throw. And this all started really a couple years ago in the wild card game, that incredible comeback by Kansas City. It exposed something that really hadn't been known for a while, and then all of a sudden, in one game with all the stolen bases, coming over to the National League, John had his, had to deal with this ever since. And he's done a much better job this year because the focus has been don't focus on it. Let us deal with it, as you mentioned. The guy's a, a fantastic pitcher, 19 and 5. 
Second highest win total in the league. Second best ERA. He's tough. He's a front end of the rotation pitcher. He's won in the World Series before. He's battled cancer. He misses inside. He came up in 2006 and he was diagnosed with lymphoma in late August. Came back at the end of 2007 after rehabilitating his body and getting into shape. Went 4 0. And then was the starter and winner in the game four clincher in the World Series at Colorado while with the Red Sox. Counts full on Gonzalez. Well, with Gonzalez at the plate, you can know he doesn't run very well. You see Baez well, well over 150 feet in short right field. Anything on the ground. Stack cast powered by Amazon Web Services. Gonzalez talks to Marquez on his way back to the dugout. One out. Well, the goal of any pitcher is to continue to put pressure on the batter and home plate umpire. If you throw it in the same general area enough, you might get a call or two. Yasiel Puig. Swinging the bat better. Last couple of games has three hits. One last night in two at bats, had two the night before. And starts against the lefty with a 1 0 count. Yeah, he does seem a little bit more on control, in control at the plate. Got a ton of power as he takes down and in 2 0. Yasiel still hit 11 home runs, but as we've talked about earlier, he was going so poorly the Dodgers sent him back to the minor leagues. Second half of this year. Yeah, he was a guy that was definitely anxious at the plate, jumping at the pitcher. Pitchers exposed some weaknesses, and he was having a hard time adjusting. Count in Puig's favor. Gets under it into center. Dexter Fowler, two out. And the batter will be Jock Peterson. Junior home run derby allows kids 14 and under to compete for the National Home Run Derby Championship at the 2017 All-Star Game. Sign up today to host a free competition in your local community at jrhrd.com. Jack Peterson has been a big boy home run derby competitor. I just got that. That was the initials for what you just read. You're so good. You're so on it. Wow. Despite the energy dip that comes with a game five. Well done, John. Peterson in this series, three out of 15 shows fun. Here you go. Throw to first. A bounce and the out. And any way he can do it. And Lester stares at the Dodger dugout on his way off the field. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Rizzo handled the back end. One nothing Cubs. This is Peloton, the indoor cycling experience designed to happen in your home. Only Peloton allows you to take high energy live and on demand studio cycling classes without having to go anywhere. Ride live with some of the best studio cycling instructors in the country. Ride flexible with thousands of on demand rides. Ride connected alongside riders from all around the world. This is Fitness Evolved. This is Peloton. I accept I'm not the deep sea fisherman I was. I accept I'm not out on the ocean wrestling marlin. I even accept I have a higher risk of stroke due to AFib, a type of irregular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. But I won't go after anything with less than my best. So if I can go for something better than warfarin, I'll do that too. Eliquis. Eliquis reduced the risk of stroke better than warfarin. Plus, it had significantly less major bleeding than warfarin. Eliquis had both. That's what I wanted to know. Don't stop taking Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to, as stopping increases your risk of having a stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases, fatal bleeding. 
Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for any bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. I may not be going for the big one, but I'm still going for my best. And for Eliquis. Reduced risk of stroke, plus less major bleeding. Ask your doctor if switching to Eliquis is right for you. It's not just a car. It's your daily retreat. The ES and ES Hybrid. Get up to $5,000 customer cash on select 2016 models. See your Lexus dealer. This just in, Wendy's announces a new Swiss Junior Bacon Cheeseburger as an option with the four for four for a limited time. With four nuggets, fries, and a drink for just $4, the Swiss Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Now back to America.